discretionary versus fixed interest trusts, which is better? That's what we're here to find out today on this video. Uh, but before we get into it, if you like the content we're putting out, please take this opportunity to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified every time we drop a new video. Also, if you're interested in getting international tax and wealth planning strategies, tips, and war stories, please subscribe to our email news list and follow us on LinkedIn. Now, the last housekeeping matter to get out of the way before we get into the material is a disclaimer. This presentation is prepared for educational purposes only. This is not legal tax or any other kind of advice. Each individual situation is different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. Now, there's two traditional types of trust. There's a discretionary trust and a fixed interest trust. And I'm gonna give a very simple example just to illustrate the two different concepts. So let's say there's a discretionary trust that someone sets up for the benefit of their four children. And the trustee gets to decide which one of those four children to distribute to, how much, and when. That's a discretionary trust. Under a discretionary trust, the trustee could, for example, decide to not make distributions for several years. And then when they do decide to make a distribution, they could make that distribution to just one of those four beneficiaries to the exclusion of the other three. Or they could give unequal distributions to all four of them or give distributions to three to the exclusion of one. Basically, the trustee has full discretion who to distribute to, when, and how much. And usually this goes for both the income of the trust and the assets of a trust. This is in contrast to a fixed interest trust where same situation, somebody sets up a trust for the benefit of their four children, each of them being entitled to 25%, meaning when the trustee distributes income or assets, they don't have any discretion in how much of that to distribute to each of these beneficiaries. It's 25%, right? Now, I often get asked which is better because it's sort of the fixed interest trust model is sort of the traditional model that most people have in their heads when they're setting up a trust, right? They say, listen, I want to set up a trust for my kids. I want them all to receive equally under the trust. Well, I understand that that's great from a fairness perspective, right? You don't, you want to be fair to the, to the kids and have them all benefit equally. The problem with this is, is because they're basically entitled to a certain percentage of the trust, many tax regimes in many countries consider that interest in the trust to be an asset, which means that that percentage of the income and assets of the trust can be attributed to that beneficiary. So they could conceivably be taxed on that portion of the trust that they're deemed to own, right? Their fixed interest in the trust. Additionally, fixed interest trusts have less asset protection because again, the beneficiary is often considered to own that portion of the trust to which they are entitled. Discretionary trusts, on the other hand, offer far more asset protection and flexibility because the trustee has such wide latitude. Because the trustee can pick who to distribute to when and how much, it's impossible for tax authorities or a debtor, for example, of one of the beneficiaries to say that they're entitled to a specific portion of the trust because it's at the trustee's discretion and nobody knows what the trustee is going to do. Therefore, in my opinion, discretionary trusts offer far more benefits than fixed interest trusts. And you can also do sort of a hybrid of trusts, right? So you could, for example, do a trust where you say, okay, uh, the trust is going to be for the benefit of my four kids and all of their bloodline family descendants. So their kids, kids as kids, so on and so forth. And the trustee has discretion which of these people to distribute to, but it must be equal between the families of these four kids. Now you've kind of, you have a fixed interest trust in the sense that 
each one of the kids and their families is entitled to 25%, but the trustee has latitude in deciding who in that family branch is going to receive, right? Maybe it goes directly to the child, maybe it goes to the grandkids, you don't know. So this is kind of a where, way where you could use a, a hybrid of fixed interest by saying each child's family branch, these four family branches are entitled to uh, receive distributions equally, but the trustee has latitude to decide when to make those distributions and to whom within each one of those family branches. I highly recommend either the discretionary trust model or the hybrid model if you're trying to achieve tax benefits, multi, a multi-generational dynasty trust, uh, asset protection, and, and, and flexibility. If you have any questions, this is the type of stuff that we help our clients with all the time. You can reach us at info at esquiregroup.com. You can check us out on the web at www.esquiregroup.com. Again, if you like the content we're putting out, please take this opportunity to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn, and subscribe to our email newsletter if you want to get international tax and wealth planning strategies, tips, and hear some of my war stories. Anyway, hope you enjoy this video. See you later.